So this is the project. It's actually a pediment above a doorway, but it's a Queen Anne bonnet top style scroll board and gooseneck molding. Some people call it swan neck molding. Well, I just uh, cut out this piece of linen again. I think I mentioned earlier it was about uh, 12 ounces the way they classified it as far as the thickness. And it's a pretty dense piece of uh, linen. I'm, I just held my board over the top of it, traced out a little bit bigger piece to cut off. It's got some wrinkles in it. I think I'm going to go ahead and iron that, take, take it upstairs and iron it. You try to get the wrinkles out. I'm not sure if my roller with the contacts them in, if I could get them out or not. Maybe I could. But I'll, just to make it a little bit easier, I'll just iron it real quick. I've applied the um, contact cement. <coughs> I used the weld wood. That's a pretty common brand. And I used a chip brush throwaway. In the past, when I used chip brushes, a lot of times the little bristles will come out in your workpiece. I only had one bristle come out. I used a paper towel to get that off of. I applied it on the linen first, and then I came to the uh, piece of maple board, which I believe is about yeah, one eighth inch thick. I'm thinking it took a lot longer to apply it to the uh, piece of linen, of course. So I did that first. There's about a 15 to 20 minute drying time. This is one of the times you want to read the instructions on the contact cement. It says till it feels tacky or till it's glossy. Well, it looked glossy when it first came out, so I'm not sure what they mean by that, but the tacky part I understand. So I'm going to let it dry for a little bit longer and then stick the two pieces together and use a roller. I did take it up and iron it. As you can still see, there's some wrinkles and things on there. I cut a little big because I really didn't want to run over the, all the edges, put you know, get on to all my plastic and have it stick to that too. Although on this piece up here on the maple, I did kind of go a little bit over the edge here, but that was a little easier to control than on the linen. So I did the linen first, then I applied this. I'm supposed to wait 15, 20 minutes till it gets tacky, then stick the two pieces together. It's longer than an hour. I think they said something that you could reactivate it by putting more on it in the future or something like that, but don't plan on that happening. So now I've applied the uh, piece of linen to the thin piece of maple underneath it and I used uh, rollers. I started out with my small one and and just kind of got it flat. It didn't have, doesn't seem to have any wrinkles. seemed to work out pretty easy. I grabbed it from each end and held it like a U and then kind of dropped the middle down and then dropped the sides on. Didn't quite get it square. You can see it went a little short here when it's actually cut a little long. So it's probably long. Yeah, it's long down here the other end and uh, just rolled it out and it seemed to be pretty smooth so far so I'm probably going to put some piece of substrate maybe turn it over and put on this side on the plastic because it seems like it soaked through a little bit here on the linen <clears throat> and then probably put some weights on the other top sorry about the voice got a little cold so after a little pause in action I'm back in progress now I'm this piece here has been glued on ahead of time. I haven't screwed it through the back yet. It caused some problems. The miter, of course, um, was off. I had to kind of compound the miter. I had to not only angle it past 45 degrees, but I had to slant the saw blade too to get it to match up. And I had to take off some of the back of it on the uh, sanding machine right here. So basically I, I made it a little bit more narrow here because this piece had stopped short when I reapplied it through the pre-drilled holes it was a little short of the miter here the backing piece so I made this more narrow by taking off some of the back compounded the angle and it it's it's a pretty pretty decent fit on the corner there the other side's easier I'm working on that right now it's uh, I didn't even have to compound it it kind of met right at the edge there and lined up pretty good. So I guess in retrospect, I wouldn't cut this on the scroll board. I would wait until afterwards because even though I had it pre-drilled with the, the holes here, right here, it still must have shifted a little bit. Um, the other thing I notice is now that I've already applied this, which I did apply some glue to, I figured that this vertical piece that's going to be running this way, you're supposed to plane from front to back to bring it down even with the curve here. And now that I've already applied this and glued this, there's no way I'm going to be able to run a hand plane along this. 
unless it's unattached, which I'm considering, attach it to the back and then just take it off and plane it down and refit it. Or rasp it, um, sand it, rasp it. It's pretty close already. I cut it on the table saw and the, this is almost straight 45 degree angle, even though it seems like it should curve. It's pretty darn close to 45 degree angle. So it's pretty close to the line right now. There's not much material, but yeah, in retrospect, I think next time I would have done what most people do, which is hold this up to the piece, draw a line and go over and miter saw it afterwards and then attach it. Because even though I had pre-drilled it, something shifted. Now this side again did pretty darn good. It's, it's right on there. There's no gap in there, but the other side took a little finagling, which is always possible in woodworking. And the reason I put this piece on early is my case is, this is only about eight inches from here and you subtract out this board and this board is gonna be even less, probably three quarters, three quarters, an inch and a half. So it's probably gonna be about six and a half inches gap in here, which is kind of hard to fit a drill driver. And even with the right angle drill and get any force behind it. So that's part of the reason I put this on early. But anyway, it's shaping up. These pieces over here are all dried and about ready to go on. Uh, the appliques, but uh, in the uh, pine cone. The piece here, this is the uh, flexible piece. I've already held it up there around the bend and I don't think I'm gonna need to wet it at all to bend it. It seems like it's pretty pliable. I get again a piece of linen that contact cemented on that. I'm gonna cut it down to size, but I've held it up there and I think I'll be able to nail that right on there without wetting it. So I'm getting ready to apply this piece to the uh, edge and again I am doing a, a glue groove here I wonder if they have a better name than a glue groove but just taking a little gouge here and, and it's a little U gouge I believe I don't know if you can see the end of that and making some groove so the glue doesn't when it's when it's vertical like this it doesn't drip past that edge to catch it my other piece that I applied, I actually used cyanocrylate on the end here and on this end, and I put tight bond in between here. I just wanted cyanocrylate to hold it temporarily for me. Even sprayed a little activator on the edge so I didn't have to hold it with my hands and try to clamp it real long since there's no clamping action. I did apply a clamp on the outside between uh, these two surfaces after the cyanocrylate had already set up and held it in place. I just didn't want to move the miter past the end or let it slide up or down or open up. So that worked out and I'm gonna pre I'm also gonna drill some holes. It's already pre-drilled on the other piece. And I took just a little block here to prop it up to so I can run the gouge along there and just kinda again it doesn't have to be exactly straight or anything like that. And it, the other thing I wanted to note while I'm here and just notice this piece, this is microfiber cloth. It's great for getting the dust off. I was sanding with 400 grit between my polyurethane top coats. And uh, I used to use tack cloths like a lot of people, but it kind of made sense that whatever oily substance you're putting on there with a the tack cloth is going to be in the middle of your stain. This stuff really picks up dust great. You can put it back in your washing machine afterwards and clean it up and reuse it but it, it's really got a surface that'll pick up all kinds of dust really well. So I just use that to get the, the sanding off. It's dry, which is nice. You don't need to wet it or anything. I mean, you could wet it, I suppose. But it's a great uh, dusting. I got a stack of these one time at a woodworking show, I think, in a plastic, but you can get it at, in a plastic container, but you can get it anywhere. You, you, you know, just make sure it's microfiber. It's, it's really got a clingy type of substance to it. So just a note about case assembly here. <clears throat> what I did was I clamped to my glue blocks first here. Then I brought a clamp from the front, put a little padding on there since I've already got stained with the, some paper towels. Then I pre-drilled the holes here and here and here and here. And I did apply glue even though this is this grain's going this way, so I've got in grain here even though I've got long grain here, I think. So I did apply some glue that, I, again, I'm not counting on that to hold anything since it's going into end grain. But I did put some extra screws from before down here 
and so I, what I did is after I drilled these back ones in, I popped it off, leaned it back on its back, and ran these um, pocket hole screws through here. Even actually a little asymmetric because I had one at, let me see if I can get the angle on that. Yeah, I had one at the top here and two at the bottom on this side. I only had two at the bottom on the other side. But anyway, so it's it should hold. I mean, again, it's not going to be bearing a lot of weight on top of it, so it's not really a structural thing. I have not yet applied it to the front of the case. Um, again, I need to take a little bit more off of here, and I might just do that with a plane before I apply it to the front. Or I could just rasp it down. It's really pretty darn close right here. It's almost right on it here on where I cut it on the table saw. I guess I cut it a little close. I got a little edge up here. So I can't normally would take a hand plane and run it this direction away from, but since I already applied the crown molding, that's blocking that. Again, you might want to wait and build your case first and put your crown molding later. But I'll work with it again. Well, if you're not comfortable with hand planing that, and in my case this piece of molding was blocking me, that belt sander took quick, took quick, uh, did quick work of that, bringing that down real quick. Even had to bring down some edges here to flatten out with the belt sander too. I would used rasp too a little bit, but they didn't do the job as well as, uh, they could do it, just take longer. Belt sander brought it right down, it's very smooth here. Now time to clean up. For the appliques, I'm pre-drilling a hole for a little tiny nail. My smallest drill bit was too big for that nail, so I took and when I first loaded the nail in with the head on it, it kind of angled out from the chuck, so I ground the head off on the grinder and then put the nail shaft in there, and I'm going to use that for my drill bit. That should allow the shaft of the nail to pass through the clearance hole, but the head should still catch. So this is what you don't see behind the scenes in a lot of these videos, how messy the shop is all the time. Just to put a pleeks on these, you can see I had to put all kinds of tape and measurements and took T-squares and measured from the bottom up to get them even. Went to a center line here and went off the sides and up the sides and around and put a top and a bottom point to kind of line it up visually. And then I sanded with sandpaper, took this high grit, or I'm sorry, low grit sandpaper and sanded off a spot of the finish underneath. And I pre-drilled with a drill press for the, some nails here. And um, then I used CA glue for these two and these. I got two holes here. Luckily these appliques have a lot of little holes that you can put nails in. I just put two and one on each side here. I didn't do all the little holes, but a lot of them are made almost. This one didn't really have much, so I had to kind of sneak it in spot hidden here. This was already had some holes made. It looked like they were lined up for nails already. That's where the drill press chuck caught it right there on that little edge, but I'll do touch up stain for that. So anyway, they're nailed down and they're glued on and and uh, from here it should be heading to the hood, the bonnet hood next. This piece for the hood, I pushed down really hard and had my wife come down and help me scribe the line off the underside here right under this part while I was holding it down in place. It bent pretty easy. Um, then to cut it, what I've done, well, I've already done one piece, this is the second one, is I took double stick tape and a piece of wood there to, as a backer and used the bandsaw. I noticed that when I was cross cutting it I got a little bit of chip out um, I guess it's gone now because I removed it, but I got a little chip out on the on the miter saw. This is so thin. Um, even with a little backer board, I got a little chip out. So I'm using the band saw to cut on the line that was scribed there. And I'm not sure if there, you know, I'm kind of just winging making this up, and I'm not sure if there's another way to to do this. If you know, I guess you could cut it proud and then maybe sand it down if you haven't already stain this piece like me but you're going to run into a little problem in the corner here you won't be able to sand that down you might have to use a chisel or something or Japanese saw or something like that to get through there so if you don't have the extra hand but you know I it really I couldn't figure out a way how to clamp this and hold it in place to be measured 
I took and uh, sprayed a little bit of water, not a lot, on the middle section of the uh, thin board here and put some weights on it overnight to see if it might add a little bend to it, make it a little easier to nail. I pre-drilled the holes here, but I'm still a little bit concerned about splitting out the wood on this thin, especially this last section here with the nails. So I'm going to do a little like, experimentation with uh, grinding the nail down flat so it doesn't serve as a wedge to split the wood fibers and uh, may even pre-drill the substrate underneath not just the clearance hole here but I'm gonna do a few sample pieces first so what I'm doing here is I'm grinding off the sharp end of the nail so it doesn't serve as a wedge and split the wood so I'm just taking it and running along the side with the locking pliers here can't appreciate that now it's flatter there it's flatter there on the side I'm just using uh, locking pliers to do it but when I eventually nail I'm going to use the uh, I'm going to use a needle nose to hold the nail so make it easier to set it this is the uh, nails I got at just a big box store you can buy reproduction forged nails whatever they look a little bent they're kind of similar to this the black um, bodies but you know they're kind of expensive so I just got this over the counter only the heads are going to be showing anyway so this is one that I've ground down they started out about five ace if I had bought smaller ones that'd be great too but grinding them down is helping so ground a bunch down what I'm going to use to uh, glue the uh, the hood board here with is a product PC7. It's got it's a two-part epoxy, and you mix it together, you get a gray epoxy. And you can get this at the big box stores too. Um, <clears throat> actually, I just noticed a date, 7:15. I think I'll use. I have another set of this that's newer, but it's got about a 60-minute working time. So that's great. I mean, the, the two glues I find with the longest working time would be the hide glue. It's kind of a liquid hide. Let's see if I've got some of that up here to show you. Yeah, this liquid hide here, again, that's a bit older on that glue, but I'm not going to use it. Usually just keep glue about one year. So this, this liquid hide glue also has a pretty long setup. I one time, uh, on the front of my fireplace, I did a bent lamination, kind of undulating with uh, about four pieces of quarter sewn, one quarter inch oak. And I used a big paintbrush to put the high glue between that, and that gave me a close to an hour working time for it dried. I haven't read the specs on that. I have read the specs on this PC7, and it's 60 minute working time, which I'm gonna need, because I'm gonna coat the, uh, you know, I'm gonna coat all the, the sides here that it's gonna glue to, and then nail it down. So I'm sure I'm gonna need that. So it's about time to glue up. I'm going to cover these sides, the gooseneck molding, with uh, some cardboard in case I accidentally hit it with a hammer. I'm also going to tape it in case I get a little epoxy on it, put a little piece of tape underneath it, and then cover it up on the, just in case I miss when I'm nailing. If you're like me, most weekend woodworkers, they don't do a lot of nailing. We tend to use screws. They hold a lot better. Uh, this is the one project, unfortunately, where the screw head would be a problem. Can't really countersink it in a material this thin and uh, hide it so it would be sticking out. So the flat nail head's probably going to be the better way to go. Plus, that's just kind of the tradition. So the main piece I'm worried about is this end piece right here, splitting this out. And I'm going to pre-drill that down in below there too as I go. Now I have to put the epoxy first and pre-drill as I go because as the board bends it's gonna it's gonna change the length. Okay so the epoxy is drying. I just nailed this side on. I found out that uh, to start the nails the pliers did help. I didn't need to start all of them certainly where there's plenty of clearance I could hold with my hand but on this side a few of these I had to use it up toward the top in the corner especially. The um, 
nailing went okay with I just used a regular hammer but there was just one or two spot there was one spot up here in the corner that I had to use a smaller nail to get in that little edge there I didn't uh, hit the uh, <coughs> gooseneck molding at all. I held this down with one hand after I got it started. I nail set it with the pliers to get it started. Then I took the pliers out and held this down, nailed it down. Had one little crack out, one little split right here on this nail. Might be a little one here too. Yeah, a little one there. The rest of them seemed okay. Uh, it wasn't easy, but again, the epoxy is a 60 minute set, which you're going to need. I didn't take 60 minutes, but took about uh, 30 minutes to get it all nailed in. On the top edge I ended up adding a lot more holes. There's a bunch of nails across here to try to bring it down on there. Um, see a little bit of the epoxy squeeze out right there to get it down tight. I didn't have any splits. I did use the uh, the blunt nails for the top edge. Uh, that's a little bit out of focus. But for the, just just for this top edge, I used these so I didn't split this this board here. But all the other pieces I used regular, just sharp nails. Again, these are uh, number ten by five eighths nails. Just and I, again, just sharp ones that worked fine all along here. Didn't I wasn't really that worried about the split out here and here because it wouldn't be visible, and I didn't get any split out. The top edge, yeah, I didn't risk it. It it pulled down after I got the first few, like these two rows, maybe these two, maybe the right in this area. Then it just sucked down. The rest of it was fine. Starting out, the first three were a little tough, trying to hold it with one hand and set it, and nail it, and keep it in place. So there's a little gap over here, but uh, it's not going to be visible. That's why I would definitely make this gooseneck higher. You know, I think it was a quarter inch up, if not more. Then uh, the one eighth plus the uh, the one eighth board plus you've got uh, a little bit of the fabric underneath there. So we'll see. I, this uh, this PC7 epoxy looks like this when you mix it up. It's got two parts to it. Used a screwdriver. It originally took some wood to get it out of the can and mix it. Next time I won't do it on a paper plate. I'm going to use this board because the paper plate was too flimsy when it really sticks. It's got real high adhesive power to it. Of course, I always mix up too much, which I'm sure you all do that too, but um, I'm not ready to go on the other side yet. I think I'm going to take a little break from that for a minute. I'm now right at the one hour mark, so I'm going to see if this, since I mixed the epoxy, I'm going to see if it's still wet here and moldable. Yes, it is. Still could work with it. It's not hardened. So <clears throat> I was looking for other things to glue up, as I'm sure you've all done too. Went and got one of the kids' toys and glued that up. <clears throat> so the design flaw I see in this whole setup for this bonnet top is this edge. I mean, it's showing, it's in grain, it's not all the way tight. I don't know if there's a way to rabbit that or put another piece across the front. I mean, not for my project because I'm looking up from below and set back in there and <clears throat> that dark two-part epox two epoxy you can see there. <coughs> the um, number of nails was too many. Again, it's kind of not really in line because I had to add a bunch. I wasn't really thinking at that time. I was pre-drilling as quick as I could for the little clearance holes in here and setting them up to get it to curl over at add. But in the next piece, I'll put them straighter. Yeah, I've already drilled them straighter here. I think pretty close. Yeah, a little bit straighter. This one again is wobbly and too many nails probably. I found you had to really nail them all the way down. It seemed like they were nailed down, but they weren't. And then when I nailed them a little further, I got a little more squeeze out here of the epoxy. There's still a little gap there. You wouldn't even see the epoxy, I don't think. Um, the sides, you didn't have to put them that close. I made them two and a half inches between, which worked fine. I just kind of, again, winging it. Um, on guessing and it seemed to probably could have put even a fewer than that in the sides. I only put three on the end there. That worked quite well. So anyway, it's just dry up. I'm gonna go to work before I do this another time on the other side. I'm 
again I put some weight back on there put a little water on there put a little curve in there this time put a paper towel so I don't get the dark mark I got here but I'll sand that out that's just from the edge of the weight one of the weights touching so uh, the, the other side and then uh, again I'm still trying to figure out why the heck we would have this design with this piece here I ran mine over the edge here you probably notice there on the back side because this this board here is set in it's not flush with the back it's a little set in I know that my wall where I'll put this above the doorway is going to have a little bit of undulation to it so that allow me to scribe this board off the back um, if I need to I'll take and just scribe it off a little bit and the other side too has got a little bit of overhang again I wanted this board set back in now for a, a Queen Anne bonnet top is gonna be a whole different thing I mean you're gonna have a lot wider distance between between here and here than my eight inches and you're gonna have room to probably drill this afterwards on there hopefully you could you know attach that later in the project but right now I'm just a matter of letting this dry not real happy with the top edge here again it's not going to show much of my project because it's sitting 10 feet or higher up so then you're looking up from below and on this side there's actually a wall just a few feet down so it'd be hard to look in from that view this other side which i waited to do second is going to be to an open room and that's going to be a lot easier to see so i'm going to have to do a little better job on that one and again it took a lot more nails than i thought it would along this top edge probably got too many in there the way it looks i don't like it aesthetically how it looks but hopefully it'll blend in with this dark stain which seems to hide a lot of problems so i tried to figure out why it took so many nails to bend this top edge over and i looked back at some old prototypes and the new the new yankee workshop and they had their grain going this way there were some split outs on the older pieces that you know a couple hundred years old they're split out along here I, I imagine i could develop some split outs along here at some point but so far it hasn't split but that may be because the grain was going the opposite way it's easier to curl over that's my thinking i did find online you can buy some eighth inch plywood but i think it was mostly birch i'm not sure if you could actually get maple which would be a little better if you're staining yours lighter stain than mine I think in the New York the new Yankee workshop he used a uh, popular piece of plywood and that's what it was poplar plywood and I'm not sure if his was a quarter inch or an eighth inch Again, this is an eighth inch here so this is what the piece looks like after it set all night with the uh, with the weights on there and uh, getting ready to coat this with the epoxy so we're gonna set up for that to do that next okay so this is the epoxy applied i started out mixing it with a screwdriver and i applied it on the boards with the screwdriver and then i took the putty knife here and smoothed it out along make it a little more even along the edges here um, so that's the pc7 two-part epoxy the gray and black mixed together equal portions and i'm going to go ahead and apply the uh, bonnet top board it just took about 15 minutes to put all the nails in once you know I already had the epoxy on the board so and that's a lot of nails so you don't have to panic again there's a long setup time on this 60 minute on the PC7 at the top um, I had to add one extra nail it already seems like I've got a lot but it was kind of still buckled up in the middle here a little bit I did get a little split out at the top driving the nails I found that when I drove them really deep that's when I started to get the split out um, these two right here that third one it was the one I had to add between the two because it was buckled up a little bit in the middle there and just smoothed out the epoxy and uh, it's gonna be dark again I don't know if you're staining light or stain it, it could be problematic maybe uh, have to put a cap I was thinking about putting like a L cap piece on here get an angle bevel and measuring it and getting a little piece of L wood and and thinner than the uh, reveal here and just maybe uh, rab it out or dado out the, enough underneath it for the heads to stick up and then put a little piece past it that's flush and a piece here and just come around the corner and cover that that's still a possibility we'll see we'll see what it looks like once I start staining it 
one thing I forgot to stain was this piece. You can see that from the side, I'm sure, if you're looking up the angle. So that'll be stained too, and I'll stain the front edge of the board here too. Uh, so it's a matter of letting it dry now and doing a little sanding. So I'm just about finishing up here with the hood on the bonnet. I made some pieces uh, to cover the nails here. I kind of just took my table saw and kind of uh, nibbled it out, so to speak, um, to make a profile like this to go over the edge, These all these nails that I didn't really like. You can still see this end grain here. Again, I, I did work on a piece to cover that too, um, to go up the side and nibbled on that for a while and, and got ready to line it up like this, but then changed my mind. It was not quite lining up. I would have had to take the rest of this heel off. I think it was hitting and buckling it up. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use some, I used a file just to bring this down on the high points where it's going to actually touch. The, you can see it's kind of uh, got some hills and valleys there. So I used a little file just to file it off to make it rough so the cyanoacrylate will stick to it. I'm going to take some tight bond instant bond here and go ahead and apply it. And then I'm going to put some nails in it. Um, three sides at least. I decided not to nail this upper edge in this area, but two here and one here. So this is an experiment where I'm going to take this um, board. It has canvas on one side. I don't know if you can see that. It's got a little canvas right here, and it's got a little bit of the uh, 1 8 inch maple. It's got that epoxy the PC7 epoxy I used, glued it on the board. There's no nails in this one. But anyway, I'm gonna see how strong that holds. See if it holds strong or not. I'm gonna take my lock pliers. Try to peel it without breaking it. <coughs> Can't pull it off there. I'm trying. <clears throat> nope, not coming off there. This is about two weeks dry, actually. <clears throat> ah, took the wood off. That's a good sign. I split the wood right down. It didn't split the glue line. I actually split the piece of wood right here. Tore that wood right off of there. So to me, that tells me that's a very good seal. It would not pull away between the... Um, canvas and the PC7. It actually ripped the board out, so that means the glue line's intact. Good, good sign. It means it'll hold up.